Art Energy's Premium Blend Series presents exclusive interviews about the oil and gas sector with the industry's best managers and analysts. Generally, in a low oil price environment, and we're very much in the camp of lower for longer, even maybe a little longer, is your transportation cost becomes a bigger percent of how much money you make. So for example, if you're in the Bakken and oil is $100 a barrel and it takes you $10 to get it to market, then it's 10%. And now if that oil is $40, it still takes you $10 to get there, so that's, oh, that's 25%. So the basins that are closer to the market, and in my view, the market is Houston, uh, biggest refining center, pipe connected. So the closer you are to the Houston market or the St. James market, the more advantage you are, because what we're seeing is basin on basin competition. Eagleford versus Permian versus Utica versus DJ versus Bakken. And so Permian and Eagleford are naturally advantaged in that scenario. And in addition to, they have uh, great economics. And that's part of where we, we target plays like the DJ and like the Permian that have superior economics that can survive better in a downturn. Uh, so we, we like those two. Eagleford, we're seeing some incredible improvements in IP rates and efficiency. So we, we think production grows in both of those plays next year. And that would suggest more takeaway capacity needed um, than was available last year. The DJ is massively overserved by too much pipeline. Essentially, there's two big pipelines that are on the table to be built late next year. And those, there's not enough oil to fill even one of those pipelines. So you have two big pipelines that are going to kind of suck every barrel out of the market, and they're really creating a lot of upward price pressure. Whereas in the Permian, it's much more balanced between supply and takeaway, so there's still a lot of opportunity and need for rail to clear the Permian market, whereas DJ, if both pipes get built, you have too much, too much takeaway. From a macro standpoint, there's still too much oil on the market. Oil prices are going to continue to be weak and soften. So as a company, we've transitioned somewhat from new build projects to targeting distressed assets and acquisitions. So we, we deploy a, what we call land and expand uh, strategy where we land or plant our flag in a basin like the Permian with a development of a terminal where we have some storage and other assets and then we sort of grow out from there. The origin of that name is it connects the Niobrara to other markets. Because mm -hmm. if you have a pipeline from the Niobrara to Cushing, that's the only market you get. With rail, we can bring other markets to the table. The same with, with the Permian, where the, the, of the value of rail is, one, it gets you to the West Coast, Gulf Coast, or East Coast. Two, is it scales fairly quickly compared to pipe, and it's not as expensive. Three, is you can segregate the oil into lights, mediums, or heavies, and take those to the best destination markets. But on the flip side, rail is a little more expensive. It's got um, uh, an or a risk to it that, that uh, you know, some companies are worried about. It's got a little bit of more of a, a sti uh, stigmatism there. And at uh, end of the day, the differentials don't really support rail movements right now. In other words, I can move your oil to the West Coast. If I could give you $10 more to do that, you would do it. But if I could give you only $1 more to do it, you probably wouldn't do it. So Permian's growing, Eagleford's growing, and they're starting to take that Gulf Coast market, which starts to push back other plays and back up barrels in Cushing. Um, but in addition, there's rail. So as, as part of what we offer is we're seeing about 30,000 barrels a day of crude oil from Pad 3, which includes the Permian and Eagleford, going to the West Coast. That was as high as 60,000 a day. We see some new markets there. Now, if you have a light condensate that's, that's uh, gone through a distillation unit, we're seeing those barrels get exported out. So Eagleford, ultra light Eagleford barrels are getting split or they're getting exported directly onto the global market. So that's, I mean, there's been a few fundamental changes. One is the Gulf Coast market. Two is the global market. To learn more about this topic and others, check out this month's print edition or the daily updates on this website.